This video is brought to you by Toys Arama UK. Use promo code TURTLETALK upon checkout and receive up to 10% off of these selected lines. That's promo code TURTLETALK. Link is in the description. What is going on Toy Fan? Project Piper Customs here and welcome to the final episode of Toy Photography, A Beginner's Guide. And it has been quite the journey and I've had an absolute blast putting this series together and I hope you have had just as much fun watching it. Going all the way back to episode one where we introduced the hobby and the essentials to get you started, to going over the differences between a camera phone and a DSLR, to posing and framing and going over just how important those two are together, to dynamic posing and understanding the reference materials used to help you improve in your posing game, to staging a scene with dioramas and props, my personal favourite of the bunch, lighting in different scenes and styles, and tweaking those camera settings to make sure that your final shot is as crisp as possible. And then that leads us all the way to here in episode 9 and in this one we're going to be going over social media. Do stick around to the end of the video where I'll be revealing the best piece of advice I can give you for this hobby. And before we get into the social media side of things, we're going to need a toy shot to post. Alright guys, now that I've got you back on the table, I thought I'd just let you uh, have a look and see what it is I've actually got going on here. Alright, uh, this being the finale, I can't not give you a behind the scenes. Alright, so as you can see, we have a little Back to the Future 2 setup going in here. Alright, so we've got Marty and we've got my customised Playmobil DeLorean. Alright, so with the lights on, and right, we've got Marty here. Now, Marty looks a bit janky, alright, that's because we're only focusing in here, all right, on his legs and the top, the bottom half of the hoverboard. Alright, it's a shot that's kind of been inspired by uh, actually a vest that I own. Okay, so I'll show you that now. And yeah, I saw this image, I thought, you know what, let me try and do something with that in action figure form. All right, so that's why it looks a bit twatish now, because we're only focusing there. All right, okay, so we've got the force perspective going on. Obviously, these two things are wildly out of scale. All right, but with it being so far back, it looks like from the camera, by the time he gets to it, it will be in size, okay? So there we have the shot. Let me just quickly go through some of the things here. Obviously, we have the little Pepsi bottle there. All right, I did wet this area a little bit, just to get some uh, glistening going on uh, from the light. All right, we have one of these finger lights, a red one, that's just getting some rim lighting on this shin. And we've got a blue light over here. Finger light also getting some rim lighting on this shin. Okay, now if I lift you up here, and what we're gonna be doing, all right, what we've done with the shot, is I'm using this torch, all right, and I'm just holding it above, and I'm just getting a spotlight on the DeLorean. Combine that, Okay, combine that with my vape, all right, and the DeLorean is gonna look like it's just arrived from out of time, all steamy and all smoky. So we've got one light up here, we've got the overhead, that's actually pointing towards Marty, mainly aiming at the ground, so it's gonna pick up that um, glossiness from the, the wetness of the water. Okay, we have this light here, which is another one of my lamps, and that's literally just cutting across, uh, picking up the hoverboard and the back of his shin. All right, and those are the only two lights that I have going on, apart from the handheld one and obviously these two finger lights. So now we're gonna have a look at the camera settings. All right, so as you can see, those are the settings I've got. ISO 400, F-stop at 16, and of course the shut speed at 1.3. And we've just got the daylight white balance going on there. All right, so those are the settings I'm using for this shot. All right, and yeah, so once we've taken the shot, question is, what do we do with it afterwards? Well, the next thing to do is to stick it on social media. So if you're using your phone to shoot, obviously from there and your gallery, you can stick it on whatever social media you have an account with. But if you're shooting DSLR like myself, then obviously you're gonna need one of these. And this is a card reader. So it's time to get the picture off the card and take a look. All right, so here we are with the final shot and I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. Okay, so I'm really happy with the lighting. I'm really happy with the staging and I'm really happy with the pose. Okay, it's all nicely framed and contained. All right, so you have Marty, which is on your left-hand side, just his legs, and obviously you have the DeLorean just here on the right. 
all right and you have the litter down at the bottom right hand corner which is filling in that area of dead space and then of course you have the smoky steam filling in the rest of the area and that area of dead space okay so it's all nicely framed out and the hoverboard itself is nicely down the middle of the delorean so it's not disrupting the lights from the front or the back end now as i said before plural as in photos it's always good to take multiples you're never going to get it on the first try Things will change, new stuff will spring to mind as you're shooting and the idea that you originally had more often than not doesn't end up being the final result, it ends up being better. And an example of that is this, which I've chosen to be my B side and that is right here. Now as you can see here, we have this is the first shot that I took. Initially this was my whole idea, was to have this as Marty, just the lower legs walking towards the DeLorean in the back. But just seeing this and seeing it shot it just weren't enough there were some things i just needed to fill in and sometimes you don't get to think of these things until you're actually shooting and taking the picture itself even whilst you're setting up okay so as you can see here there's a the the litter that was down the bottom in the original shot obviously here down on the bottom right it is a bit bare weren't happy with the framing of the hoverboard as you can see there's a little tiny bit of the foot grip just poking in at the top so i needed to rearrange that let's fling you back over to the final shot as you can see the litter just nicely fills in that nice dead space and it's themed accurate to the 2015 time period and uh, yeah i added some moisture to the ground so the light can reflect a bit more off of it and i did add an extra overhead light so it picks up that texture of the concrete diorama base okay so yeah this is my final shot but i'm keeping the b side is what we call in the toy photography game the b side and that could literally just mean an alternate pose an alternate angle something a little bit different within the original idea and you just want to present it as an alternative okay and so yeah so now that we've got our b side and our main side it's time to stick it on social media. So when it comes to social media, as you can probably imagine, there is an absolute plethora of different platforms out there. Most of you may be on every single one of them. And some of you may be on a couple and a bit cautious on joining others. So the two platforms that I'm going to focus on are the two that I personally use to put my artwork out there. And that being Instagram and Facebook specifically. Now, if you are one of those that are on every single platform and yourself are well-versed and fully ingrained into the community already, then what I'm about to tell you may come as no surprise. But for those of you who may not be on those platforms or may only be on one and are hesitant in joining another and are not fully integrated into the community but would like to be, then I'm going to share with you the best places on these platforms to upload, especially Facebook, and do my best to navigate you through the murky waters of Instagram. Okay, so starting with Facebook. Now, if you already have your own account on Facebook, which there probably isn't many people on this planet that doesn't yet, then you pretty much know and very familiar with groups. Now, when it comes to the toy community side, there are massive amounts of groups. Some are country specific and some are worldwide. And there are those that are just dedicated to toy photography. And the two groups that I'm personally going to share with you, which are the best for gaining feedback, Ah, and you've heard me mention one of these before in episode one is Articulated Comic Book Art, better known as ACBA. And the second being the sister group to ACBA called The Grind. Now the best way to describe ACBA is if you took tangible toy photography, okay? Just tangible toy photography. And let's say that tangible toy photography was the movie business, ACBA is Hollywood. The best of the best are formed, molded and crafted on that group. The best thing about ACBA is that not only will you get welcomed, but you will receive feedback and constructive criticism so you can improve on your next shot. Now make no mistake, they are not there to hold your hand. They will be respectful, but also they will be very blunt and honest. Just something to consider. But there is no doubt that that group is 100% fun. Not only in getting to view others' artwork and seeing how awesome some shots can be, but also seeing the behind the scenes, which often get posted in the comments to see how they can actually pull off the shots that they're shooting. Now, when you're uploading to ACBA, there is one thing you have to consider is that it is a very busy group. People are posting their pictures every minute of the day. And with that, as you can imagine, the board of the group is continuously continuously changing so the more interaction a post has in terms of likes and comments the higher up the board it will stay 
Now, sadly, there are times when great work does accidentally just get buried because so many more pictures are getting flooded in. Uh, some work just gets missed. But the main thing to do is to keep posting, keep grinding and keep getting better. Keep taking on board the criticism and advice and you will start making a name for yourself in ACBA. Now, if you're looking for on the spot feedback whilst you're shooting, then there's no other place better than the grind. Now, the grind is a much smaller group, but it is formed by those within ACBA as the staging area. So if you're looking at your setup that you've got on the table and you're just thinking something's missing or something's quite not right, but you yourself just can't put a finger on it. And if you can, and if you've got the time, ping the shot over into the grind and there will be people there that will be able to give you on the spot feedback. It's always best to get loads more eyes onto your work because what you can't see, others might be able to. And then once you're happy and you've taken on board the feedback and then you can post your final shot that you're happy with onto the main group of ACBA. Along with those two, there are some other great groups out there. Obviously, if you enjoy specific toy photography, say for instance, turtles, and you know that's my jam, there is a dedicated group on Facebook for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy photography. There is also Action Figure Photography, which is another fantastic group. There's also Toy Comics Inc. and Beyond the Toys. And that's just a handful of some of the toy photography groups on the platform that you can enjoy and upload your work to. And I'll be putting all of the links for them in the description. All right, so now I think it's time we post this picture. All right, so we're gonna upload to ACBA group. All right, so first thing we need to do, we need to create a post and then we need to upload. Now we're gonna upload one image as our main. That's part of the group rules and any other images such as B-sides and behind the scenes that you wanna upload, you put them in the comments. Okay, so that is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna upload our main, which is here, all right. And there we are. So now we hit say something, come up with a catchy uh, caption, if you will. If you already have a caption in mind for the photo, then type it in. I'm simply just gonna put uh, time to fly. And then I'm gonna uh, scroll down a little bit and I'm also going to put uh, my Instagram handle so that people can link into it and uh, follow me. So for that, I'm just going to put Instagram dot com forward slash project by for customs okay so there we are and that's all we need and uh, yeah so now we can upload and there you have it picture is uploaded right there on the board now before anyone jumps in and comments because the board constantly keeps moving up and down we are going to add our b-side and our behind the scenes into the comments so let's go to the comments open that up we'll put in b-side and that is exactly what we're going to call it b-side okay not z-side b-side right there that's comment one and then we're going to add some behind the scenes so let's add a couple behind the scenes here so we're going to add this one right there all right seaside and that is essentially what seaside means regarding in the acba group is basically just behind the scenes so you've got your a side your b side and your c side okay it's so the c side that is for behind the scenes and then we're going to add some more we're going to add where are you where are you where are you going to add this one and we're going to call that c plus side so we do that and then we're going to add another one, which will be the one with the vape. Okay, and we're going to call that C++ side. Okay, and then we're going to add one final one, and which is the inspiration for the shot, which is the image on my vest. Okay, which is just here. Where are you? Up there. And we're going to call this uh, inspiration from my vest with a little laughy face. And there you have it. That is now live on the board for anyone to like or comment at their will. Whether they like the shot or not, they can let me know. Now, one of the tricky things when uploading to Facebook is that the white harsh backdrop of Facebook that they use, as you can see, if we scroll through, okay, this white harsh backdrop for their format, 
um, that can dull some of the color and some of the light from within the picture when you're just scrolling through your feed. Okay, it's only really when you click into the picture that you actually get the full color because then it goes from white, as you can see, if we click in, it then goes to a black backdrop and that just allows all the light and color to pull in. So do make sure you're aware of that when you're uploading, also when you're taking your shot itself. So it seems a bit bright through your viewfinder, that's okay because then it could probably be detoned down when you upload it because majority of the time not everyone's going to click into the photo to see the full scope they're mainly going to judge the photo from as they see it in their newsfeed on that white harsh backdrop okay so now we're going to move on to the instagram side and that's kind of a bit of a different kettle of fish okay but i'll explain more as we go through the post in process all right so firstly we're going to hit post up top then we're going to find our a side which is right here and you click the side button it will reveal the full image in its frame okay but i'm going to want to upload multiple okay just like on facebook i want to upload the b side and the behind the scenes okay so we're going to hit this button right here and that is going to give us all the multiples that we want so we can upload more so we're going to hit for the b side that's another one and for the uh behind the scenes we're just going to do the same ones as we did for the facebook group so we're going to have that one we're going to have that one we're going to have that one and we're going to have the vest as the inspiration all right so there it is i see all this going to allow me frame wise for that one but it's fine it's showing the full image of the vest and that's all i'm after so we hit this arrow to the side here and now we get to the editing stage of Instagram. Now, with me, I personally, and you've seen it throughout my entire series here, I prefer tangible toy photography. And that means everything that you see in the camera was done in front of the camera, all right? So like hiding flight stands, all the effects, everything else, everything you see with the lighting, everything is done in the camera. That's the kind of toy photography that I personally do, and that's the, the kind that I personally enjoy. Not to knock any of the others like Photoshop or outdoor or any of the other kinds of toy photography, this is just my preference, okay? But what I consider Photoshop being anything that you can add or say remove from a picture, okay for instance like a digital backdrop or some sort of effects like rain smoke uh, a fire or a power effect for a hero and in the removal side of things a like a flight stand you know you digitally remove them uh, those what i all consider to be photoshopped work all right uh, but when it comes to stuff like this in terms of brightness adjusting or white balance adjusting or even a filter i don't consider them Photoshop aspects okay so sometimes if you feel that your picture is slightly too dark from what you imagine from what you had it in the viewfinder and that can happen sometimes when you have a, your image taken in the viewfinder of your camera and it looks perfect and you get it onto a digital device and somehow it's come out a little bit darker than you anticipated it is okay in my opinion to just adjust the brightness to get it back to how it was and how you saw it okay and here the Instagram tools are actually pretty good to do that I don't feel I need to do them on mine currently right now I'm happy to upload it as I took them so what we're going to do I'll quickly show you in case I was here you have your filters running across the bottom just like this and if we wanted to edit the brightness and white heart you see this little button just on the picture we tap that okay and that just takes us individually to the photos okay so you can do one at a time so here you've got your filter side and then you've got your edit side and here you can adjust the brightness bring it up or bring it down you know the old chestnut which all the things that you can kind of do in your gallery anyway for your device okay you can have a sharpen filter which actually does enhance the picture quite well without making it grainy so that's a good one uh your highlights if in case you just wanted to highlight some certain things okay uh, or if you want to play with some shadowing uh, and just like just some of these things here I do not personally consider Photoshop because some of these features you can actually have on the camera itself so if you can digitally manipulate a photo before you've even taken it that's not Photoshop okay so these things I'm actually going to leave so let's get out of that all right I'm happy with these as they are so we're gonna go across and that brings us to once it's finished processing our main upload page and here we can add the caption and all the hashtags okay we're going to get into hashtags in just a second all right so let's start off with the same uh tag as we did for facebook now to all to, to get a good spacing okay one line after another with a gap 
For Instagram, it's a bit different, okay? It doesn't recognize the uh, enter button, okay? Uh, so if you try and just use the enter button to space out your paragraphs or whatever you want to put in, it will just lump it all together, okay? So the best way to do uh, a paragraph and have it separated is if we go down to here and then we add a period or a full stop as we call it in the UK. And then you go down to your next line and that will break it up, okay? So from here, you can, I will add uh, swipe capitals and go down to small for B side and BTS and BTS is behind the scenes and that's where you're going to see all of the behind the scenes shots I'm going to use the emojis and have the across arrow to indicate into swipe go back to the keyboard okay and now we can add the hashtags and when it comes to hashtags if you're new to Instagram or uh, you know if you're, you're new to the platform and you haven't set up your own account uh, hashtags are essentially a window uh, for all that particular subject okay it's a, a separate window of its own okay and what it does it pulls everything that has that hashtag into one area so you click on that hashtag and anything involving that hashtag you will be able to see throughout Instagram Okay, it kind of brings it into its own little gallery. It is a window for people to see. And the more windows you have, the more people within Instagram and the community can see it. All right, so we're gonna start adding some hashtags. Now, uh, I will list all the hashtags that I use. Okay, because there's a bunch in the toy community that a lot of people use uh, to get their work seen. And also it's good to have hashtags of the actual theme of what's going on in the picture itself. So like, for instance, this is Back to the Future, so I'm going to put Back to the Future hashtags in there. Uh, it's a NECA figure I'm using, so I'm going to put NECA hashtags in there. Okay, so all the different hashtags you will need. But for the toy community ones, I will list them all on the screen right now. Okay, and you can pause that and you can make a list of them yourself. All right. And what I like to do sometimes, but I've also just heard that, you know, if you freshen them up a bit, you might get some fresh eyes on it as well, is I will copy and paste from a previous post and just slap them in, because there's quite a lot and it will take a lot just to type them all out. But I have heard that if every now and then you put in a bunch of brand new, freshly typed hashtags, it will revigorate the algorithm for you and you'll get some, uh, you'll get some more eyes on your work. So I'm actually going to try and do that right now. All right, so I will see you in a second when we're finishing up typing out all the hashtags. Okay, so we have finished uploading the hashtag. So as you can see, we've got a whole plethora here, all freshly typed out. So hopefully uh, that should help rejuvenate things. Uh, but yeah, and then you can go into whether you want to tag people, add a location. Uh, you can even link it to your Facebook, so it will automatically upload there if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, you've got all of these different things to look out. For me, I'm good as is, so there's only one thing left to do now. Hit that tick button. So here we go. Okay, and boom, we are live on Instagram. All right, so there we are. Uh, both platforms have now got the shot up. All right, so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the Instagram platform. Oh, Instagram. <laughs> now, if you're already on the platform of Instagram, then you know how funny it can get. And if you're not, I highly recommend joining as it is specifically built for uploading pictures. Now, when I first started uploading my work, I was uploading onto my personal Instagram account. And that was during my custom days. Then after a while, I decided, you know what? I didn't want to flood my personal Instagram. And that's when I decided just to create a dedicated account for the hobby. And that is what birthed my entry into the community. Just keeping that hobby specific, and having mostly the only accounts that I followed on that account be a part of the hobby as well. Now, it is not just legend. There are tales of people blowing up on Instagram with one picture. But that shouldn't really be your aim with Instagram. The Instagram algorithm continuously changing. The one thing that does seem to be consistent throughout all of the algorithm changes is consistency itself. And by that, I mean quantity. The algorithm wants to keep you using the platform. So the more you upload in a day, the more the algorithm will boost your work and your account. And it doesn't matter a damn what the picture is of. You could post a picture of your big toe or a cabinet door handle, it does not matter. And sadly, that is a reality of Instagram that I'm aware of. I've seen pictures blow up that have no reason to. And I've also seen great masterful pieces of art just get completely ignored. 
But if there's one piece of advice I can give you, especially regarding Instagram, is do not give in to quantity and sacrifice quality. By all means, if you have the time, then try and be as consistent as possible, but definitely do not sacrifice quality of work just so you can get a post in that day. Always try and be happy with every single piece of art that you put up. Now it is very easy to get sucked in and dependent on likes. You know, it's all exciting. The more likes you get, the more your work's being put out there and the more people seem to be enjoying what you do. And it's addictive, there's no lie about it. It is very, very much addictive. And in there lies a problem. More people start getting reliant, okay, on likes. They start getting self-dependent on likes, like their own self-worth hangs on the balance of how many likes they can get on a post. So another piece of advice I have to give you is definitely try not to fall into that trope. It's very easy to do, I have done it myself, but definitely do not be discouraged or disheartened by the amount of likes a post that you put up gets. I personally see Instagram as my own art vault, like my own archive, doubled as an art gallery for anyone who wishes to have a look. I'm very, very grateful for those who do like the work I do and comment and like and share it in their stories. And that's what you need to focus on. If your post only gets 10 likes, whereas your prior one got over 100, focus on those 10. And to have 10 people like what you've done, that's awesome. So I try and stay humble and grateful for whatever my art gets. Because no matter how many followers you have, it doesn't mean that all of those followers are going to like or see your work. That's just the nature of Instagram. But a massive upside to the platform is it is an unbelievable gateway into the community. It's a great place to make friends. And of course, it's definitely a great place to discover new artists like you. And another great place to discover new artists, and that is toyphotographers.com, a website that I was introduced to by my friend Ariel on Instagram. And this website is fantastic, filled with loads of artists from within the community, sharing tips and tricks and their stories. The website is also home to a podcast filled with loads of episodes discussing every aspect of the hobby. In which is a series called Newbies, which is hosted by my friend Ariel and Terry. And they were kind enough to reach out to me to be a special guest on their last episode. And with the similarities of their Newbie series and my Beginner's Guide series, it only made sense to link up, talk shop, and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity. So massive shout out to Terry and Ariel, and I'll be leaving links in the description for this website and both of their Instagram handles. When it comes to the hobby of toy photography, there is no one defining way of doing things. My Beginner's Guide series is not the be all end all, this is how you do toy photography. This series is simply showing you how I do things and the methods that I use. Crafted over years and channeling everything that I have learned from my peers within the community. And that brings me to the best advice I can give you for toy photography. And that is pull from everyone. Everyone has their own way of doing things. New techniques and tricks are being discovered all the time. And new ways of pulling off old tricks are also being discovered. There is a massive well of knowledge out there, not only for you to learn, but for you to contribute to yourself with the tricks that you may know or that you will discover along the journey. So whether it be watching series like this on YouTube, from me or other people, looking at behind the scenes photos on posts on Instagram, or joining ACBA and The Grind and getting involved in the community, seeking feedback for your own work, asking questions, and applying what you've learned to make your next shot even better. And this is how you create your own style. So if you've learned anything from my Beginner's Guide series, consider it a slice. There is still a whole pizza out there for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. If you enjoyed this one, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel and if you like what I do here, please consider subscribing. And even though the beginner's journey has come to an end, we're not done yet.